All my sons are special to me, but Giovanni changed my life. He kind of has like a connection with me in a way. I don't know, it's something between me and him. And he's just very like me. My proudest moment, um, the interaction with my son, is when I play with him, you know, that this interaction, play with him, and he give me that smile that I know that he's the most happy boy in the world. My biggest wish for my brother is for him to be able to walk and eat through his mouth. Sometimes they say that special parents, um, they give special kids, so I understand that at this moment in my life. The biggest worry I would have for Johnny's future is not having him around to always be there for me. We're gonna give him this love that we always give to him every day. That will be my, I'm afraid of that. Every day, somewhere in America, more than 300 innocent men, women, and children become victims of medical malpractice at the hands of incompetent and negligent doctors. Last year, over 98,000 victims were killed by doctors. More than four million victims are permanently injured each year. Today, the Insider Exclusive goes behind the headlines in When Doctors Go Wrong, Getting Justice in America. To examine how David Efron, founding partner at the law offices of David Efron PC, got justice for his clients in a difficult and challenging medical malpractice case. David Efron has earned the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as one of the best trial lawyers in San Juan, in Puerto Rico, and in the United States. His goal is not only to get justice for his clients, but to make sure that everyone is treated with equal respect and dignity as guaranteed under the Constitution of the United States. His passion is problem solving. He approaches each medical negligence case as a scientist and as a lawyer trying to solve a puzzle. And because he's seen many patients suffer needless pain and injury, he makes it his dedicated mission to get legitimate, truthful answers to tough questions and issues, which result in hospitals and doctors being more responsible to patients and society. These successes drive him to help more people who have been harmed by incompetent and negligent doctors. His goal, to make medicine safer and more accountable. He has built a substantial reputation by consistently winning cases other law firms have turned down. His amazing courtroom skills and headline-grabbing success rate continue to provide his clients with the results they need and the results they deserve. This is the Insider Exclusive, live from San Juan, Puerto Rico. It is my great pleasure to introduce David Efron to the show. Welcome to the show, David. Thank you very much. Tell our audience a little bit about your law firm. What type of law does your firm usually practice? For the last 30-some uh, years in Puerto Rico, we've been representing victims of medical malpractice, products liability, crime, uh, and people who are basically voiceless. Uh, we become their voice in, in the courts and in trying to get their uh, issues mm. and matters heard and getting them, of course, compensation, which is well deserved. Right. And in, in many of your cases, you represent people on a contingency basis, meaning not only are they voiceless, they don't have money to pay lawyers. Exactly. So you take on cases at great expense to your firm, time-wise, money-wise, and pursue them to get justice, right? Yes. Well, that's what we do. Bec uh, yeah. Most of the people we represent are, are people of uh, low economic means. And uh, if it weren't for us and firms like us, they would not have a recourse or they would not have, and they would not have access to the courts. In the case we're discussing today, um, it is basically a medical malpractice case. Tell our audience a little bit about what happened to your clients and who your clients are. My clients here are a nice Puerto Rican family. They had uh, their fifth child uh, with uh, went to the same hospital, 
the doctor and the hospital nurses uh, committed, uh, you know, departed from the standard of care, which is the, the technical term, and uh, they, as a result, the baby was damaged, where the baby now has cerebral palsy, uh, permanent damages. The baby uh, you will not be able to see because he's fully dressed, but the baby has to be fed through a feeding tube in his stomach directly. Because and that's still today. And it, the, the baby's name is Giovanni? The na baby's name is Giovanni he's Pietri. seven years old, correct? I think he's eight now. Eight years old, soon to be eight, yeah. Um, what went wrong when you say departed from the standard of care? What did the doctors do wrong? Basically, they didn't follow the baby properly. They delayed in bringing in 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 bringing the baby out uh, by a C-section, yeah. uh, and uh, just the delay and the negligence by the nurses at the hospital in uh, in in following the baby and seeing that the baby was in distress yes. uh, with all the monitoring and all the other information that they had, uh, any reasonable doctor and a, and a reasonable staff would have uh, known what they should have done. It would, that's not what happened in this case. When the family originally came to you, you evaluated the case. It was a medical malpractice case. You went out and got an expert opinion Correct. We had several experts. Several opinions. expert opinions. We, we had a, an obstetrician. Mm -hmm. We had a, a, a neonatologist. We had a pediatric neurologist, and and then of course we always uh, need in order to evaluate the damages in the case properly, a, a life care planner right. that will tell us how much it would cost for the future care and medical needs of, of, of this of, of this baby. Right now, normally in a trial you would present these people in the courtroom. But something happened with some of the judge's rulings which really made your case much more challenging and difficult to pursue. Tell our audience well, what happened. You know, the, the basically, uh, our, uh, for the first time in 20-some in years that we've used uh, this expert, who to me was the best expert in the United States out of New York, he became ill uh, and couldn't make it to trial. Uh, the uh, unfortunately, he subsequently passed away, uh, which was a big loss to, to everybody. But uh, according to Puerto Rico law, any doctor can testify as to any specialty. You don't have to be a, a board certified in any specialty in right. order to uh, be able to give an opinion on that. In this case, the judge did not allow uh, the pediatric neurologist and mostly the neonatologist that teaches gynecologists to give any testimony on uh, obstetrics. This is unusual. Why? It, it's unusual. You know, uh, I mean, you know, we, we don't want to we don't want to criticize judges' opinions, but you know, I think the First Circuit Court of Appeals did that in immediately reversing that opinion and sending right. the case back to a happy resolution. Yeah. Um, basically, that particular judge, the trial judge, uh, made it almost impossible to prove the case. Of course, and then dismissed the case. And then dismissed the case. But and you appealed yeah. it, and they remanded it, meaning they... They reversed it. Reversed it. Yeah. They re yeah. And it was settled confidentially, I Yeah, believe. we have confidential settlements with yeah. every, every defendant in this case. Now, the, uh, that's what we do. You know, we, we're always against gigantic, tremendous odds. This particular judge was a, always is one of the judges that was known as a uh, uh, as a pro defendant, yeah. pro insurance company uh, a, a judge, because in his a professional life as a lawyer before he can become a judge, he yeah. represented insurance companies. So yeah. he brings that into the bench. And uh, he, he was an activist judge mm -hmm. that uh, would uh, do this kind of thing uh, and, and always try to give the plaintiffs a hard time in getting their compensation and in getting their day in court. Mm -hmm. And I want to bring out one thing. You know, you appeal the case, and yes. when it goes to the appellate court, yes. generally judges don't like to criticize other judges unless it's absolutely necessary, correct? That's correct. Because there's always, there's always, let's call it a, there's always a presumption of correctness. Yes. There's always a presumption that the trial judge did the right thing. But in this particular case, it was so obvious and it was so patent yeah. that the judge did not follow the law that 
our First Circuit Court of Appeals, which is yeah. the federal court for federal, federal appellate court for Puerto Rico that sits in Boston, mm -hmm. magnificent judges mm -hmm. in, in that sitting in that court, uh, did not have a problem in reversing this judge as they had in on many yeah. um, on many other occasions yeah. uh, and try to do justice. Which goes to one of the reasons we want to do this case. It's pretty difficult to prove medical malpractice cases to begin with. To begin with, that's correct. But when you, the odds are against you and a trial judge is, let's say, biased um, or renders a decision which is clearly wrong, you can appeal a case and sometimes get justice, which you were able to get in this, in this particular situation. Yes. Today we have Giovanni's parents with us. We're gonna bring them on right now. It is my great pleasure to introduce the parents of Giovanni, Michael and Delma. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Giovanni. How are you? Very good. Take our audience back to when this whole event occurred and tell us um, how this whole medical malpractice case has changed your lives. Well, it begins like a surprise in our lives. We don't expect that because he was a healthy baby boy uh, during the nine months of pregnancy and he was uh, yeah, something that would never him. occur. Yeah. We, we never think that in life and things happen. Uh, we learned from there that we are so, uh, I don't know so, to say the word. Frustrated. Uh, frustrated sometimes and you know open to things in life that yeah. things can happen in seconds that can change our lives yeah now Giovanni, Giovanni is seven going on eight correct going eight years yes and over the last seven or eight years you used to work didn't you yes you have been primarily taking care of your full son. time with Giovanni yes yeah and that has been kind of probably stressful in a way hasn't it yes not knowing. Now, one of the reasons we decided to do this story is because initially in the, at the trial level, the initial court, the case was dismissed. Um, you fortunately were able to hire and retain David Efron. Correct. Um, what do you think about his legal services that he provided here? Well, it was great. We just have a, a case dismissed in one time of the the trial mm -hmm. but we trust in their firm and they go ahead and we go to boston and they get that proof of the case back to puerto rico yeah. and and we win it finally yeah fortunately because you know it takes it costs a lot of money in a situation like this um what do you think about the american justice system it's fair i think it's fair in all ways uh, we have to look for the right justice and the right lawyers in some cases mm -hmm. because they can handle every aspect or every situation of the long process that it can take. Yeah. But thanks God, we are all over. I'm going to ask this question to both of you. What do you have to say to parents out there who are faced with the similar circumstances and just beginning to try and get justice, what advice would you give them, Delma? Yeah, at, at first I was, you know, like afraid to do that step. Mm 
Yeah. But afraid to sue somebody. Exactly. And why is that? Um, it depending on the person, but maybe the consequence or um, what involve all the procedure, right? Yeah. Mm. But um, I have uh, my husband that helped me, and as he told, we have a, a nice mm. lawyer, a good lawyer, that give us the confidence mm -hmm. and how that benefits for uh, not only for us because it's for Giovanni for yeah. his future. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so. And Michael, the same question to you. What advice do you give fathers out there who have a child that was uh, injured by a doctor? Well, for, for me, first of it is to verify the doctor's record before hiring them. Mm -hmm. If they don't have like a lot of malpractice in their lives, contract them. Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, if they had a problem, uh, they have to keep working, trying to look for the be better health for this kid, better therapies, and anywhere in the world. Yeah, and you got to take legal action because exactly. these things cost a lot of money. Exactly, yes. cost a lot of money, and taking care of the kid, therapies mm -hmm. for life is not only for a few years. We expect the kid can walk or crawl or whatever, but we have that situation at the moment, and we have to work day by day. Yeah, well, I want to thank both of you for being on the show, uh, and we wish you much success with Giovanni in the future. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. David, in medical malpractice cases, how do law firms evaluate them? Well, I think uh, there's some basic steps that you have to take. First of all, you have to see if uh, the case is still viable based on uh, whether it's still timely, yes. if, if the statute of limitations has not run on these cases. Secondly, you have to see if, uh, especially in Puerto Rico, uh, you have to see whether there's some kind of immunity uh, to the defendant. For example, if it's a government hospital uh, or a government employee, that kind of thing. So assuming everything is in order, you cannot just assume that there, there was medical malpractice. Chances mm. are that there wasn't. So what you do is, since we are not doctors, we uh, have the client or we get the records, we get the medical records from every, every uh, medical service provider. And, and sometimes that's difficult to get, isn't it? Well, there, uh, fortunately in Puerto Rico there's a special procedure for that mm -hmm. where if they renege or if they give you a hard time, you can get them in 24 hours through the courts. Really? So, so uh, which is something that Puerto Rico is more advanced than many of the states uh, in, in, the, in, in the mainland. Uh, the, then, once we have the records, because we're not doctors, we cannot evaluate them, we send them to experts that we consult in every different medical specialty. And we would, l like, uh, we would like them to give us an opinion. Uh, most of the time, the opinion is that uh, there was no departure from the standard of care yeah. uh, by the physician. Not every bad result constitutes malpractice. Not every bad result means it's somebody's fault. But when it is somebody's fault, and when that departure from the standard of care is what caused the damage and, and, and was the causal relationship for the damage, then we have a case. Uh, so we evaluate and turn away most of the cases uh, that we get called on, but we, in a way, I guess, we keep the viable ones, we keep the, 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 the ones that should be compensated. When you take on a case, um, sometimes the other side might want to settle. How do you know when the right time to settle or just bring it to trial? Well, the obviously it's the decision that has to be made by the plaintiff, by the family, by the parents of the, of the child in this case. Uh, we can only suggest and give them recommendations. We can only suggest this is what they offered. Uh, we think the case is worth uh, this much. We think that there's a risk involved in this case. Every case has risks, mm -hmm. especially in front of a jury. Uh, and uh, we can recommend to them what we believe they should do in the ben best benefit of the child, but it is their decision to, to take. Yeah. In, the, in, the, in this case, 
they uh, accepted settlements, but not everybody settled, so they still decided to try their case. Yeah. And we did. And you prepare to go to trial in all cases. We prefer to go to trial. We, yeah. you know, when we take on a case, we're not, I, I don't see ourselves as, uh, as a law firm that just uh, uh, processes insurance claims. Yes. We are trial lawyers, and we are, our preference is to try the case, to mm -hmm. actually go to court and try the case. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you very much for being on this program. Thank you for inviting us. This has been a, a very interesting case because in the beginning it looked like they lost, but you jumped in there and you won the day for them. And, they, and Giovanni needs that. Yes, yes. He, this will. This is something that uh, he will need that help that he's gotten, which is yeah. substantial. It's. I think. I believe it's one of the record verdicts in settlement in Puerto Rico, and uh, you know he has a. He has a. Uh, long life ahead of him yeah. with the right help and uh, if he does he will probably outlive his parents and he will not be a burden on the public health system or on yeah. the public he will he will have his own funds to be able to take him care of himself privately I assume probably his older sister is going to be the person in charge yeah. of him once uh, once the parents are gone and uh, you know and th that's the situation. Good. Well, thank you again. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at InsiderExclusive.com.